This is day 47 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the GCSE exams, every day from Monday to Saturday, I've been posting a new six mark video so that you can use these as part of your revision for the GCSE exams. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to all of this week's questions and also the playlist with all of the videos in the series so far. If you're taking GCSE Combined Science, then the hardest topic in quantitative chemistry, and to be honest, probably the hardest topic in the whole of the GCSE, is maximum theoretical yield. And then the one thing that the exam board can do to make it slightly more challenging again is to introduce this concept of limiting reactants and excess reactants. Now, actually, it's very rare that they throw this in like this, because if they do, then it just makes the question so big and worth so many marks. And so what they tend to do is give you some intermediate steps. So, for instance, they might give you the relative formula masses and therefore the question will be worth fewer marks because you're doing less work. But here I'm asking you to do the whole thing from scratch because it's really good practice for making sure that you do understand how to do maximum theoretical yield and you do actually understand what limiting and excess reactants are. Now, for a question like this, the first thing I would be doing is familiarising myself with the numbers and which chemicals they refer to, because I cannot tell you the number of times that I have looked at a student's work when I'm marking it and found that either they put the wrong mass together with the wrong chemical, or maybe they've worked out the number of moles of something that wasn't even in the calculation, and so they've wasted a huge amount of time. So the first thing that I would be doing if I were you is writing down that there are 20 grams of propane and 70 grams of oxygen. And I don't know what carbon dioxide is. That's what I want to work out. And then just crossing out the water so that I don't have a moment of madness in the middle of my calculation and try to use that instead. The next step of the calculation, if they haven't given it to you in the question, is to work out the relative formula mass of each one of these chemicals. And I do this by looking at my periodic table and adding up the masses of all of the individual atoms in each chemical. So for propane, there are three carbons and carbon has a mass of 12, eight hydrogens and hydrogen has a mass of one. And that makes a relative formula mass of 44 grams per mole. Then oxygen is obviously a little bit easier because it's just this divalent molecule. And then the carbon dioxide just by coincidence, also happens to have a mass of 44. Now, whenever you have a quantitative question, even if you're not really sure what they're asking you to do, it's a good idea to try to calculate the moles of something, whether that's a maximum theoretical yield question like this one, or if you're taking the GCSE chemistry, the triple science, then maybe in titration using concentration and volume together, because there's pretty much always a mark for working out moles, and it's always an intermediate step in the calculation. So I'm going to need to remember that mass is MR multiplied by the number of moles. And remember, if you're taking your exams in 2022, even though in physics you're being given all of those equations that would be on the equation sheet, for chemistry you don't get anything like that. So you do still need to know that mass is Mr. Mole. And actually right now I need this in a rearranged version. So I'm going to change that up and make it mole is mass divided by MR. So I need to work out the number of moles of both of my reactants. So I start with propane. And I'm going to do 20 divided by 44, which gives me an answer of 0.45 recurring moles. And I want to use that full calculated display um, because I want to make sure that I'm not rounding early because that could introduce error into my answer. And then if I do the same thing for oxygen, I do 70 divided by 32 and that gives me 2.1875. So I'm writing down that full calculated display. I'm not rounding early. Now, if I just look at those numbers, it looks like I have a lot more oxygen. Well, I do have a lot more molecules of oxygen than I do of propane. But now I need to go back to that symbol equation to find out how much more oxygen do I actually need? Now, remember, chemists are lazy and we do not like writing the number one. So, for instance, carbon dioxide is not C1O2, it's just CO2. And likewise, there isn't a coefficient in front of propane. But I know that secretly there is a one there. You just can't see it. So what this formula tells me is that propane and oxygen are in a one to five ratio. For every one mole of propane, I need five moles of oxygen, like so. And so if I look at the number of moles of propane that I have, I can calculate how many moles of oxygen I would need to react with it. So I multiply my 0.45 recurring by five, and I find out that actually I need 2.27 moles of oxygen, which is more oxygen than I have. So my oxygen is in fact the limiting reactant. 
And I'm going to explicitly write that on my exam paper so that even if I don't get the next step right, my examiner can see very clearly that I have identified it as the limiting reactant. Now, I'm trying to work out the mass of carbon dioxide and I always use the limiting reactant to do that. Basically, what we're saying is it doesn't matter if there's a bit of extra propane. If I haven't got enough oxygen to react with it, then it's not going to get used up. So the oxygen is what is going to determine how much carbon dioxide I've got. So now I need to look back at my symbol equation and at those coefficients to figure out how many moles of carbon dioxide I'm going to have. So I can see that I've got five moles of oxygen for every three moles of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to take my 2.1875 and divide it by the five, divide it by the thing that it is and multiply it by the three, the th thing that I'm looking for. And that tells me that I'm going to make 1.3125 moles of carbon dioxide. And now I go back to my masses Mr. Mole calculation and I can see that my mass of carbon dioxide will be 44 because the mass of carbon dioxide is 44 multiplied by 1.3125, which gives me a final mass of 57.75 grams. And that will be my final answer for this question. So as I said at the beginning, I'm cheating a little bit here because I don't think that the exam board are going to give you a question in quite this format, because if they did, it would probably have to be an eight mark question, not a six mark question. What they're more likely to do is to give you at least one of the relative formula masses so that they're solving some of it for you. So for this question, I would give yourself one mark for all three of those relative formula masses. Sorry, but I'm being mean. Then a second mark for working out the moles of propane, a third mark for working out the moles of oxygen, a fourth mark for identifying that the oxygen is the limiting reactant, a fifth mark for using the coefficients to work out the moles of carbon dioxide and your final mark for working out that final mass. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that by now you are feeling really prepared for your GCSE exams. If you have found this useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE science revision videos coming soon.